today's video, we're going to be reviewing what, in my opinion, is the best budget landscape photography and travel tripod. So, let's start out with the first thing you see when you look into buying something. The price. So this tripod is $70 on B&H. This is the only place I was able to find it. B&H is a pretty good store, so you should be good buying from them. It's $70, which I think is a really good value for what this tripod provides. This tripod provides some features and build quality performance that you can only find in more higher end tripods. So what do you get in the box once you order it? Well, it comes with a nice carrying case, an archetype plate to allow you to mount your camera. Of course, you can use other archetype plates. It's nice that they include one. And you also get the tripod itself. So I was really impressed with all you get for that price range, especially since it's under the $100 mark. So let's get into the positives of this tripod. The first one being price, which I already talked about. But another great thing I found with this tripod, which usually lacks when you're buying something at this low of a price, is build quality. But this tripod is actually very well built. It is made out of aluminum. I know most, especially landscape photographers, prefer carbon fiber tripods, but this tripod is made out of aluminum. Despite this, it is still nice and light while maintaining a good amount of sturdiness. I take this tripod with me on lawn hikes to get shots and it never bothers me. It is very light and can be taken anywhere. It has a nice strong ball head that will support most cameras. The one thing I will say is when you turn over your tripod to the side to try to take a portrait orientation shot, it may lean over a little bit. I would suggest getting an L bracket for that issue. Most tripods will have that problem anyway. This tripod is weighted to hold 13 pounds. That is a lot for a tripod of this size. You can put all the way from a point and shoot camera up to a medium format film camera on this tripod. This tripod also has a convenient hand grip on one of the legs. This not only allows you to carry it around easier when you want to just hold it instead of clipping it to your bag, it also allows for more comfort in the winter because aluminum can get really cold and really hurt your hand. So by including this hand grip, you have something nice to grab onto that won't hurt your hands. So this tripod does include a very nice ball head. So this is a panoramic ball head, allowing you to get full 360 degree rotation, allowing you to get some great panoramic shots. I have found this extremely useful, and when I go back to my other tripod, I can't seem to get this kind of results I get with this tripod. This tripod also has your standard other knob for adjusting the direction of the camera. It controls both up and down and side motion, but if you want to go from the right to left, I would suggest using the panoramic dial and then using the other knob to go up and down. Both of these knobs seem to be really well built and seem like they'll hold up well over time. I do find that there is some slippage with the main knob. I find that my camera can fall down a little bit, but that's just because of the weight of my camera. I am using a full frame setup, so it is pretty heavy and maybe a little bit taxing on the ball head. There is a convenient tripod hook on the bottom of it. Now you may be wondering, what is a tripod hook used for? Well, say you're on a mountain and it's very windy. Maybe your tripod is blowing in the wind a little bit and you're trying to do a long exposure, but you keep getting unsharp shots because of the tripod shake. Well, this tripod hook allows you to put your backpack or maybe a sandbag on there, stable the tripod and allow it to get better shots. This is really crucial, especially in those dangerous conditions where you could potentially lose your camera because of wind. Another pro of this tripod is that it's great for travel, as mentioned in the name, the Magnus TR-13 Travel Tripod. So you can reverse the center column of this tripod. Basically, all you do is you unscrew the hook on the bottom, and then you take the column out and just insert it the other side. This allows for a nice compact setup that will fit in most roller bags and most backpacks, allowing you to bring it on a plane with you. My only complaint is that it's a little bit wide so it gets nice and short. It's a little bit wide and a little bit inconvenient in that situation. Even when you don't have the center column reversed, it is small enough to fit on the side of your camera bag. That's how I always carry it and I find that it's really light and really good for travel in those kind of on-the-go situations. This could easily be taken around the world with you as you travel and take amazing photos. Another pro of this tripod is that the legs are extremely flexible, allowing you to get those different angles. Same in a creek. I have two of my legs on stable ground, but then there's a deeper part of the creek to the left. So I can take one of the legs and angle it, putting it up against a side of the creek, allowing me to get more stable shots. I have found this feature really useful, and it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do 
is move the legs back and hold down the dial and it will unlock for you. This tripod also gets very, very tall. It goes up to 62.5 inches. You don't see that kind of height in a lot of travel tripods. Even the pro tripods from like three-legged thing that are specifically meant for travel, they only go up to about 55 inches, which is not enough for me. I'm not very tall at only 5'7", but I find that I at least want a tripod that can go to the height of 60 inches when I'm out in the field doing landscape photography. This can be really convenient, especially in travel situations if you need to get a shot over tourists, allowing you to get a different perspective without people. So I've used this height feature many times and I think you will like it too. This tripod has good solid feet which allow for nice movement in the water. This is not necessarily a negative because I don't think the people who would be buying this tripod would need to do this but these feet cannot be swapped so you cannot put spikes on them. That would be a nice feature but not really a complaint for me because I never found the use case for them. Alright now let's get into the negatives of this tripod which there's not a lot which is really good for a tripod like this. Now let's get into the negatives of this tripod. There's not a lot of negatives, but there are some. It is very challenging to put the tripod plate in. Fortunately, you kind of have to detach the part from the tripod itself in order to get enough space to fit your Arca Swiss into the plate. I always feel like I'm gonna lose a part when I'm doing that. It's a little bit weird, and I'm not a huge fan of that. It uses the Arca mount, but it doesn't seem to be a quick release plate, so you will have to manually slide in this tripod plate. This is fine because once you figure out the right angle to put in your plate, it should work well for you. The bubble level falls off extremely easy. In fact, this is probably the most disappointing part of the tripod, which is good to say about this tripod because if that's the worst part, you know, everything gets better from there. So there's this little bubble level that goes in the hole at the top of the tripod and it just it's not in there well. I don't know if it's a manufacturing problem in my tripod specifically, but I lost it probably on the first week, which is fine. I never use a bubble level, but I know some people do. I just use my in-camera spirit level, but some people do and that might be a major drawback for you. The center column is not removable. This annoys me so many times. So like I said earlier, the legs are flexible but I can't get all the way down to the ground because I can't remove the center column and it gets in the way of me putting it close to the ground. I think it would be a really easy fix to make it removable, but for some reason this tripod does not include that feature. That would make the tripod almost perfect for me, but unfortunately it does not include that, so you cannot get those low angle shots that many people desire. So despite these issues, I still use this almost every day for my photography, and it's allowed me to get some shots that I would never get on my cheap Amazon Basics tripod earlier. I highly suggest this to anyone who is on a budget but still wants to step up their photography with a more solid tripod. Thank you guys for watching today. I'll see you in the next video, and goodbye.